So hello again, and this is the second of three part videos on explaining how the cloud mask works in Google Earth Engine on uh, a few things that, that one should learn related to remote sensing. And um, in this one, you will learn in this video in particular, you will learn um, how to do Boolean um, if statements and also how to apply a mask. So a Boolean if statement in remote sensing is something like this, right? So you have an image and here I have a, a one band image, which um, I call image and it's a three by three image. And um, and see you have some values is one four nine, one four nine. And I have put this code in Google Earth Engine, which I have the image and I say, check whatever is equals to four. So the Boolean is, is, is it four? And, um, and the answer is, well, the first pixel, which was one, was not four. So I'm going to give it a value of zero. The second pixel, which was four, it was equals to four. So I'm going to give it a value of one. And the third pixel, had a value of nine, so the result was zero. So you can see from this raster, this was the outcome of a Boolean a function. But also one of the things that you will need to learn is how masks work. And um, masks, in a certain way, you should interpret like if you had an image, like again, we have an example with the same one band, image here of three by three pixels, right? Then we have a pixel that has a value of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we have here a one band raster, um, which has values zeros and one, right? So wherever we have a value zero, the outcome will be zero. But wherever we have a value one in the mask, will assign the value that we have in this image. So and here we have two. So there we go, we have two here. Here we have three, but in the mask we have zero, so the value is zero. In the center, we all have ones in the mask, so we will assign all the values that we have here. In fact, you, you should see mask sort of as, um, as a multiplication of uh, zeros and one. So if one, you multiply it by zero, you get zero. If you get two and multiply it by one, you get two. And if you have a three and you multiply it by zero, you get zero. So you get the idea, right? And, and, um, and that's how you create a mask. And masks are extremely useful as well as those Boolean if statements. And um, let's see how that works in Landsat. Uh, sorry, in, in Google Earth Engine. And before we had been um, changing some of the codes that we get directly from, from clicking the Landsat uh, tier one um, collection. And I just had changed uh, first. I had annotated this part because we'll learn later how to do the masks. And I had changed um, some of the ways that we uh, reduce the image collections. Um, but now what we want to do, it's actually create a mask, um, which, which is something that happens in the function, but we're not going to use the mask that we have here. Let's, what I'm going to do is get another data set. So let's go to Google Earth Engine. Let's go to data sets and, um, let's get the cropland data set. So let's explore that and let's just get this first one. Um, let me see if this, uh, yeah, this is the right one. And, um, okay. So yeah, so this is a cropland data set and, um, we have some different bands, um, one related to cropland to the values and whether if it's cultivated, uh, yes or no. Um, let's go ahead and open that. I can even go to the bottom and I'm pretty sure it has a code. Yeah, it has a code. So let's click here. And um, let's run that. We have it for the United States. Let's actually just go to the um, plains, like Iowa, for instance, where we know there's a lot of agriculture happening. Okay, so we have a lot of agriculture happening, right? But here we have some gray, 
so yeah so because it's like the a uh, um urban area um right now we're using here the layer cropland but um let's go back to the bands so we had another band that was called cultivate so i'm just going to go ahead and copy that word and put it here let's run that ah i should have selected the area of interest just keep it here let's just just keep it in this area so let me use the inspector and i'm just going to click here and um, so cultivated it's the value is two if it's cultivated let me actually grab this uh, information and change it in the here so next time when I run it it goes back to that area and let me give it the zoom 10 if I run it again it should be around that area great let me bring this up a little and um, okay so so if I click the inspector I see that cultivated it is equal to two okay so what am I going to do now? So I'm going to, as I told you, we're going to learn how to use a Boolean if statement. Okay, so I have this image right now, um, which is just one band. Um, and I just want to do a Boolean of if it's equal to two, meaning that it's cultivated, I'm going to give it a value of one. And if it's not cultivated, then it's going to be a value of zero. Because then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use that as a mask for Landsat. Because let's say you just want to do an analysis on cropland and you're not interested in any other place. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and say var. A, and let's call it actually mask um, equals to cropland which is our land, sorry, cropland cover, which is our image. And, um, and we're gonna apply the Boolean, right? And the value that we want to be true is two. So I'm saying, so if it's true, in, if, if an image cropland cover, it's two, right? Give me a value of one. And if it's not a value of one, then put zero. And um, let's go ahead and, and I'm just gonna change it here to mask. And let's go with here, mask. Okay, let's run that. So here we have the result. So and it's looking good. So let's see if I did it right. So if I click here, I have value one. And if I click in the urban area, I get a zero. So, okay, so I have created a mask. Let me go ahead and, and copy this and let's take it to our example of Landsat, which I have it here still. And um, let's put it here. Yeah, you're just gonna go ahead and put it here. Okay, Ah, but I have two things called data set. Would that be a problem later? Actually, let me, let me go ahead and do something, which is that I'm going to call the var a median mid now let's call it mid landsat equals data set um what was the thing that we did before not maximum let, let's just put the median like for instance like it does like we had before so median sorry forgot that I have to put the entire median okay and, and what I'm doing here is what I did in the previous video right so I'm just reducing the data set here to only the median values okay and um, here I just copy pasted the code that you just saw before with the creation of the mask and um, now let's mask that uh, met Landsat okay so um, you can say bar mask landsat we're gonna call it. and then it's gonna be med landsat uh, dot and you can see that this is used in this function which is the update mask function 
so we can put that update mask and um and what are we going to use as mask well, well we have created the mask this one over here so the outcome of this should be masking the areas that are only crop so sorry that are not crop are not going to appear in the output and we're only going to see a landsat in the areas where there are um crops but to do that we should put this now over here right so we're going to map at layer and um we're just going to use the these parameters that were here that's good ah but uh, i forgot that i need to change the the location to where we had it before did I copy that here? Ah, yeah, but I have it here. So I can add this map app center. I can, I can uh, comment that one. And um, let's go ahead and run it. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it did work. So as you can see, right? So I have print out both uh, layers, right? Uh, the mask, but also you have here the Landsat that it only appears in the areas where there are crops. So you can see that in the areas where the urban areas, you don't see any Landsat information, but in the areas that you have crops, then you actually see the Landsat. Well, I hope you have learned in this video. And again, I have a third section of a third part of this video where then I'm gonna explain a little bit more about the bitwise and.